Good afternoon all. On behalf of Badminton Pan America Confederation, we welcome you to our Coach Corner Sports Science Research Program. My name is Maria Carrera and I will be the moderator of the session. For Spanish and French community, please look for the interpretation icon at the bottom of your screens. We recommend that you use your headphones and mute the original audio for better sound quality. If you have any question or comments, we invite you to write them down using the chat function located on the right side of your screens. Today, we will start our third season. Thus, we welcome Herman Valdez, Badminton Pan America Confederation Chief Operating Officer to give us a welcoming remark. Thank you, Mario. Dear friends, on behalf of Babington Panam, let me welcome you all. We know we are at a difficult times uh, following national guidelines for this pandemic for COVID-19. And it is our aim to keep our Babington community, family and friends safe. We are happy to announce the launch of the third season of our program, Babington Panam Coach Corner. In the first season, we went through different topics contained as training, air badminton, and uh, different aspects of the game. During the second season, we began including scientific research, you know? and this uh, was the aim to promote spaces for interaction, exchange of relevant uh, research, and the results that benefit all of us. And also, remind you that we have five para badminton dedicated webinars. You know? This season, we will do our best effort to continue providing you with the best information and the best uh, research we can get our hands. And it will allow you, all of you, to improve and motivate you in new ways in your work on court. Let's start our presentation today. We have the pleasure to count with uh, Mehdi Anvari. He's from Iran. And he will share the important topic, the cardiac advice before getting back to exercise and competition. No, thanks, uh, Mary, for being with us. Thanks to all for being with us today and stay safe and stay well. Mario, please. Okay. Thank you, Herman. Um, yes, as uh, Herman just mentioned, we have today Mehdi and Vari, and, uh, who will talk about the cardiac advice before getting back to exercise and competitions. But uh, first, let me speak a little bit about our special guest. Uh, Mary is a medical doctor, a cardiologist, is member of health and well-being working group of BWF. Also, he's a former deputy chair of development committee of Badminton Asia, head of sports cardiology department at Iran NOC, member of medical commission of Iran NOC, and board member of Iran National Feder Federation. Without further ado, Mary, it is our honor to have you here. The floor is yours. Uh, I will ask you to share your screen and uh, take control over the presentation. Hello, Mario. Can you hear me? OK, thank you. Thank you again for your invitation. And uh, I hope this uh, presentation would be helpful for everybody and uh, uh, once again thank you and uh, let me check that everything is okay uh, can you see that yes. uh, my powerpoint slide on the screen yes uh, wait i think it's uh, yeah perfect now it's on full screen excellent yes so can i can uh, continue yes okay thank you so much so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you and your family are fine during this pandemic. The topic that uh, I am about to talk about it is cardiac advice before getting back to exercise and competition during this era. Why this topic is important? There are two aspects, at least. Uh, the first and the most important aspect is the cardiac involvement of COVID-19. And uh, this involvement uh, causes myocarditis. Myocarditis is an inflammatory process of 
uh, heart muscle and is one of the most uh, prevalent uh, cause of sudden cardiac death in athletes. Another aspect is, uh, you know, because of almost all competition has been suspended during this era and uh, elite athletes may be far from the regular exercises. So uh, we are going to talk about this advice and uh, recommendation before getting back to exercise. And uh, I hope everybody, uh, I hope this topic be uh, helpful for everyone and uh, let's get started. So uh, the outline, uh, we first talk about effects of COVID-19 on the heart and we will talk about myocarditis and about exercise advice during the COVID-19 era and uh, who should have cardiac investigations. As uh, you know, uh, the COVID-19 uh, is caused by SARS-CoV-2 virus. Uh, this virus belongs to family of coronavirus. It's new and uh, we are still learning about it. The transmission is uh, uh, via droplets from respiratory tract system and the social distance and wearing a face mask are the ways for prevention of this disease. The common symptoms include fever, dry cough, fatigue, and anosmia. Anosmia means the loss of the sense of uh, smell and agosia, that means the, uh, the loss of the sense of taste. And other symptoms like sore throat, myalgia, headache, nausea, and diarrhea. Hopefully most of patients will experience mild uh, and even asymptomatic. For example, uh, they could be without any uh, kind of symptoms or mild, uh, mild illness. Uh, I mean, the duration of the disease less than seven days. But uh, about 15% will develop a severe illness and uh, may uh, become debilitated debilitated for several days. And uh, unfortunately, about 5% may develop critical illness, which uh, require hospital admission. The rate of mortality is about 1% to 2%. The who, uh, the ones with uh, underlying diseases like hypertension, diabetes, obesity, may have uh, more severe disease than others. Uh, the patients older than in, uh, older than 70 years old also maybe have a high risk maybe a high risk for uh, complications and uh, need uh, more need uh, to hospitalization and we are going to talk about covid-19 and the heart why the heart will be involved in the covid-19 because this virus uh, will uh, enter the cell via a receptor named ACE2, angiotensin converting enzyme 2. This receptor uh, found in the lung and the heart. So because of this receptor, uh, uh, in addition to the lung, the heart could be involved in the COVID-19 infection. For the patients uh, who admitted to hospital, about 30% have elevated troponin. Troponin, what is troponin? Troponin is a cardiac enzyme that will do, uh, increase in the blood when the heart muscle damage uh, is damaged. Uh, so uh, about 30% have elevated troponin when this situation present and that uh, is equal to more severe disease more likely to require intensive care and ventilation and the mortality will increase in presence of elevated troponin in the cardiac enzyme the possible mechanism of cardiac involvement in covid 19 uh, uh, are for example direct myocardial uh, injury that I told you is called myocarditis 
and uh, arrhythmia like uh, because uh, the drug and medicine we use for treatment of COVID-19 uh, could uh, induce arrhythmia, uh, especially with, uh, in patients that have underlying disease. And the stress cardiomyopathy because of, uh, uh, because of uh, the fever and the, the uh, severity of disease that cause stress cardiomyopathy. So myocarditis, as I told you before, myocarditis is an inflammatory heart muscle disease associated with cardiac dysfunction. The causes are infective or non-effective cause. And uh, the diagnosis is by is based on histological, immunological, and imaging criteria. Uh, myocarditis is one of the causes of sudden cardiac deaths in athletes. The percent is very, but it's around 10%, according to different uh, databases. You see in this slide uh, the rate of myocarditis, the red, uh, the Orange one, 12% uh, or 6%, 10%. It's uh, around 10% uh, in summary. And the rec exercise recommendation for the athletes with my myocarditis. We recommend no exercise during and three to six months after acute infection. And the uh, training, restroom training, uh, when we recommend restroom training, if the, bio, uh, the biomarkers are normal, the function of heart is back to normal and without any arrhythmia or dysrhythmia. If there is myocardial scar, we should uh, be more careful and uh, a periodic reassessment, uh, especially in uh, first two years is necessary because of the risk of recurrence. Diagnosis is based on uh, clinical history, blood test, electrocardiography means or ECG or echocardiography or cardiac MRI, magnetic resonance image. So uh, the exercise in COVID era, exercise as you see in this slide, I hope to see it, uh, is uh, uh, my, uh, the myocardial benefits, benefits for heart, benefits for uh, hypertension, uh, dyslipidemia, and uh, for obesity, uh, and also the anti-inflammatory uh, benefits. This benefits is of note, and uh, so uh, this anti-inflammatory uh, benefit of exercise is important. But as I told you before, the social distance is important as itself. So this uh, era, I think, one of the most valuable sport that could help to promote health in the society is air badminton. Because, you know, uh, it's uh, an aerobic exercise sport and have the elements of fun, enjoyment, because, you know, because of social isolation, uh, every one may experience uh, depression and any psychological problems. But the uh, elements of fun and enjoyment and social connections in air badminton could be helpful. And on the other hand, the social distance also is considered when you playing air badminton. I think air badminton is one of the most valuable ways uh, for promo health promotion in this era. So in this slide, you see uh, the relationship between exercise, immunity, and risk of uh, infection. Sorry. Uh, it's a J-curve, uh, you know. If you have moderate exercise and regular exercise, the risk of upper respiratory tract infection will decrease about 40 to 50 percent so uh, i 
I hope I don't talk so fast. Uh, we have one minute break, and after one minute, uh, we will back to you soon. I think it's okay now. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Wait. Do you have perfect? Full... Yes. Now we can see it. Okay. Can I continue? Yes. Please, maybe. Okay. Okay. So um, the exercise during active acute COVID nineteen infection. If suspected or acute infection, we recommend no exercise and uh, the, the self-isolation for 7 or 14 days is recommended until the patient be symptom-free. The gradual resumption, I think if uh, you, sh you take this gradual resumption, uh, for take-home message, uh, I think it's uh, that's all. Because in the sport and exercise, the most important thing is gradual resumption. Because you know, uh, about eight months or more after COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the elite athletes may be far from their uh, fitness, and uh, maybe they uh, want to start. Uh, the play, the playing and exercise at the same level that they have been, and uh, but uh, they should uh, start at the lower level. And uh, the gradual assumption is an important issue. You should take care of it. So gradual assumption of exercise when the patient is or athlete is asymptomatic, asymptomatic for seven days. After seven days of being asymptomatic, uh, you could start gradually the exercise. Ideally, uh, we recommend we should have a negative test. What test do we have for COVID-19? It's two types of tests. One of them is PCR for detecting viral RNA. And in athletes, we recommend troponin, uh, the cardiac enzyme, bec because of detecting myocarditis, one of the causes of sudden cardiac deaths in athletes. For asymptomatic carriers, uh, continuing uh, and abstain from exercise for just seven days, uh, we recommend. And in this uh, group of people, also we recommend uh, a test for uh, to be ensure to ensure conversion to negative. So, uh, is cardiac screening necessary for all? Uh, this, uh, it's an important question because uh, we should ask this question: What is the risk of com uh, cardiac complications? It's very important because of the risk of myocarditis is a cause of a sudden cardiac death. And the, another question we should uh, consider is, is it feasible? Can we test safely? Are the resources available? And uh, what is the cost of the evaluation? Uh, in the next and upcoming slide, uh, I uh, uh, will review the recommendations. Uh, for cardiac screening of athletes, and uh, we will discuss about it. As I told you before, we have two types of tests. One of them is a nucleic acid test for detecting viral RNA that we um, take from root or nose swab. And the another test is antibody testing that uh, that's including IgM and IgG. IgM de will develop three to six days after onset of symptoms. That means acute infection and IgG de uh, developed eight to 20 days after onset of symptoms, meaning past exposure. But having an IgG doesn't mean that you have immunity against this disease, but uh, it means the past ex exposure. So now, uh, is it necessary for every athlete to have this type of test? Not. No, it's not necessary, but it can be useful. And because uh, the, av the availability and the reliability of our test increasing, hopefully, 
and uh, we could use our test uh, better than before. And there are a specific and different situation. For example, an amateur athlete that wants gradually return to his regular cycling is completely different situation from a football team restarting that restarting training and competitive games. So we should consider and decide decide case by case and it's different in the situation that we are in there so and uh, also uh, we should uh, take care of also a player and also support staff and, uh, here is the recommendation of italian federation of sport medicine this recommendation is uh, comprehensive and uh, they recommend uh, complete and extensive cardiac evaluation. Uh, if you see, they recommend for all of the athletes that want to get uh, to, uh, back to exercise, they recommend at least history examination, electrocardiography, ECG, echo, and exercise tests. They recommend at least this uh, exam evaluation for all at least that want to start uh, to get back to exercise and start competitions. I think it's very complete and uh, extensive cardiac testing. But the recommendation uh, from American College of Cardiology, it's a little complicated, so I summarize it in the next slide. They recommend if the athlete is asymptomatic. I mean, uh, with no history of uh, symptoms, and they are swab negative, there are uh, no limitation to exercise and no need for cardiac testing. So, if you are swab negative and asymptomatic, no limitation to exercise and no need for cardiac testing. When the swab is positive and the athlete is asymptomatic and uh, we recommend no exercise for two weeks and no need but no need for cardiac testing and when the uh, when uh, we are going to the next situation then the patient or athlete is symptomatic every kind of symptoms is uh, it's not important is mild or significant no ex we recommend no exercise for two weeks and all all the patient need cardiac testing but the um, variety and uh, the type of uh, testing is different when the uh, when it is mild and not uh, mild. I mean, uh, we mean not hospitalized. Uh, we just check troponin, electrocardiography, and echo. When and uh, the uh, patient is uh, hospitalized, more comprehensive evaluation like uh, cardiac MRI is needed in this group of people. Uh, the next slide, uh, we are going to talk about uh, the recommendation from the section of sport cardiology and exercise of the European Association of Preventive Cardiology. Uh, uh, I am uh, happy to know, tell you that this slide, uh, uh, I provide this slide in, in, uh, in cooperation of and uh, Dr. Michael Papadakis, the president of uh, European Association of Preventive Cardiology, and I hope uh, be helpful for you all. Uh, they recommend if, according to clinical history and examination, if the athlete has no history of symptoms or mild infection, but currently asymptomatic for seven days. What is the mild infection? When we called it mild infection in this recommendation, it is when the patient not hospitalized, the sh uh, when the illness is short, it means 
less or equal than seven days, no debilitating symptoms. I mean, no need uh, and uh, the patient uh, didn't, uh, um, not better than, and no myocarditis symptoms like chest pain, palpitation, pressing cup or syncope. When all of this criteria is present, we called it mild infection. So, uh, when no history of symptoms or mild infection, with a mild infection, but currently asymptomatic for more than seven days. So, uh, we recommend gradual retraining and return to play. But if the athlete is currently asymptomatic, but uh, he or she had a prolonged disease and illness, I mean more than seven days, or the myocarditis symptom during the acute infection, but now uh, he or she is asymptomatic. It's important to know that uh, the important issue that uh, the athlete should be asymptomatic. But if uh, they have a past uh, history of uh, prolonged illness or myocarditis symptoms during the acute infection, uh, we should have uh, we should evaluate them by ECG, electrocardiography, and echocardiography. If it is normal, we recommend uh, them to uh, we recommend to evaluate them for maximal exer exercise tolerance test. Uh, and if it is normal, uh, we recommend gradual retraining and return to play. But if ECG or echo or the exercise tolerance test is abnormal, uh, we recommend further cardiac evaluation and treatment according to protocols. On the, uh, the last um, table is uh, when uh, the patient uh, have debilitating symptoms like being bedridden or hospitalized with COVID-19 or persistent cardiac symptoms or reduced performance. And they all need uh, comprehensive cardiac evaluation like ECG, electrocardiography, echocardiography, troponin, cardiac enzyme, and CMR, cardiac MRI. And if it is normal, the gradual retraining and return to play is recommended. And it is, if it is abnormal, the further cardiac evaluation and treatment according to protocol is recommended. So you see all the situation in one slide. But um, uh, this slide is uh, for uh, uh, elite rugby players, and uh, it is the same as the same as the previous slide, uh, as you see on the uh, green box. If uh, the players uh, has no history of COVID and or history of mild infection or with no cardiac symptoms during the infection and uh, currently asymptomatic for seven days, uh, we recommend gradual return to training and uh, monitoring by the team director. But if uh, they have history of prolonged um, symptoms or uh, have the history of uh, myocarditis symptoms, uh, they, uh, they should consult with cardiologists. And uh, the red one also, uh, the red, uh, box also uh, re uh, recommend uh, referral to cardiologists uh, when they have debilitating symptoms like being bedridden or hospitalization. So uh, the conclusions, as you know, SARS-CoV-2 virus pandemic has changed all aspects of life. And uh, and the important issue for the community of sports and player is safety of future sporting competition. The safety of players is more important uh, than anything else. And uh, there are issues, right? Travel arrangement, accommodation, 
and COVID-19 local statistics and local healthcare in infrastructure and uh, future vaccination program. I think uh, that would be one of the most important issue that I hope to happen and being uh, perfect and work properly uh, for getting back and getting back to normal life. I hope. Uh, the, uh, the last two slide uh, conclusions. As I mentioned and discussed about it, the SARS-CoV-2 virus has the potential to adversely affect the heart. It's because of the receptor ACE2 that uh, found in the lung and also in the heart. It is um, um, it's completely um ev i think every scientist agree with this uh, uh comment that athletes with symptoms should not exercise and gradual retraining 7 to 14 days post symptom resolution it is important to be symptom free at least for 7 days and for cardiac evaluation you see a different uh, recommendation from Italian Federation and from American College of Cardiology and uh, also from European Association of Preventive Cardiology. Uh, I think it's um, uh, the uh, every country should uh, take uh, this recommendation according to the situation in their uh, territory uh, and they should uh, balance the risk, risk, the benefit, and also consider the feasibility because you know uh, the cardiac involvement in this disease is important and may cause sudden cardiac death. And we told you that the important, the one of the most, not one of them, the most important issue is the safety and the health of our player. The sport and exercise should be healthy and helpful for them not uh, uh, suffering from injury or uh, even uh, the uh, events, the, uh, the tragic effects like sudden cardiac death. So cardiac evaluation is necessary, but in a specific situation and uh, we should balance the risk and benefit regarding the feasibility. For athletes and regular exercisers with no evidence of infection or mild infection do not require cardiac evaluation prior to resumption of sports. Who should be considered for cardiac evaluation? Uh, when the prolonged illness, I mean, uh, the, when the illness uh, for, uh, prolonged more than seven days, we should consider cardiac evaluation. When uh, the myocarditis like symptom is present during the ac acute infection, what are the, what are the symptoms? Uh, they are uh, these are uh, like chest pain, palpitation, exertional dizziness, dizziness means something like vertigo, and syncope. Syn what is syncope? It's a transient loss of consciousness uh, means syncope. When uh, the athletes or patient uh, present and uh, Compliant from the transient loss of, con loss of consciousness, it means syncope, and we should consider it, consider it as a myocarditis-like symptoms, and they uh, should undergo for uh, more cardiac evaluation. And another table, then uh, they have persistent symptoms or reduced exercise performance, and if they hospitalized for COVID-19 infection, or they ex uh, experience debilitating illness. I mean, being bedridden. In these situations, we 
it is uh, uh, come uh, uh, there is no controversy and everybody agree that in this situation we should recommend uh, for a more cardiac evaluation and uh, i think uh, because the situation and the, uh, uh, the situation of pandemic and this era is uh, very important and we should uh talk about this situation about the danger and uh danger of uh for example uh, uh getting uh, danger that uh, could threaten the athletes and uh, we should uh, tell them uh, and uh, say informations that uh, they should take they should care about their health and they know about these symptoms they should know about this recommendation and they should take uh, take care of themselves and they should care about uh, their health and i think these presentations and this webinar uh, for coaches and players could be helpful for them for uh knowing more knowing about this disease about the symptoms and about the consideration for them i hope uh, everybody uh, uh, everyone i i hope everyone uh, enjoy from this slides and uh, be informative for all of you and uh, if uh, there is any question, I would be happy to answer. Yes, the, okay. Thank you very much, Mary. Uh, yes, now we will move on to the Q&A round. So if uh, any of the participants have a question or comment or experience uh, you want to share, please uh, write them down in the chat box, okay? Uh, yes, Mary, we already have one question. Let me translate it as it's in Spanish. Um, wait, give me a second. Uh, can I make it sound? Okay. Um, knowing that vaccines, that the arrival of, of vaccines, let's say, will take place in mid-21, uh, what is your opinion regarding the use of masks uh, as prevention of the contagious no? in athletes? Uh, could it be used uh, for low and medium intensity workouts? Yes, uh, you mean uh, the uh, rule of uh, face mask? Uh, yes, the face mask. When, okay. Uh, you know, uh, uh, if uh, because uh, in so many of patients, they are, they could be asymptomatic. They could, uh, maybe they uh, have no symptoms that uh, um, no symptoms of COVID-19, but they could transmit it from their a droplet from the respiratory tract. So, uh, because uh, when uh, we don't have any uh, test, we uh, we, did, uh, we don't know that they are asymptomatic carriers or not. When uh, you uh, facing a asymptomatic carriers and you wearing face mask and also they uh, wearing a face mask too. When uh, to, uh, both of them have, uh, they, both of them wearing face mask, still the rate of uh, transmission is still uh, present. But the percent is very low, about 3%, I think, about 3%. But uh, if you wear a face mask, uh, I I told you it's the percent is three percent. When you didn't wear any uh, face marks, the risk of transmission is as high as, uh, for example, forty percent. So wearing a face mask could uh, could decrease the risk of transmission, but still the risk exists. Uh, so I think the, the exercise and sport like badminton for example air badminton i think because uh, the social distance will be uh, uh, i think uh, when you are playing uh, the social distance uh, is okay and i think uh, the wearing uh, face masks for all of them uh, could uh, decrease the rate of infection 
significantly. I hope uh, you find your answer. Uh, yes. Um, following this uh, idea, um, what other precautions uh, should be taken now? Let's say that the trainings will begin and also, let's say, new competitions will begin in this uh, post COVID era. You mentioned sometimes some tests, uh, some blood tests, uh, the ECG, but sometimes uh, we don't have, let's say, the funds to get all our athletes yeah. tested. So what other options uh, do we have? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, as I told you before, we should consider a cost-effective, um, uh, oh, sorry, uh, we should consider a uh, okay, sorry. We should consider a cost-effective strategy. For example, as you as you told, uh, the fund uh, is important issue. The cost is important, and we should decide uh, when we gathering this problem together and then decide. It's uh, a policy that. Uh, maybe different country by country. For example, I told you in Italian Federation, they recommend complete and comprehensive uh, evaluation, but maybe it's not feasible in another country. But testing like ECG, uh, PCR or antibody testing is completely helpful. And you know, if we start competition, but if our outlets experience this disease or complications, uh, I think uh, it have uh, 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 the burden is high and may affect the athletes and even have, uh, uh, for example, worse consequences, unhappy consequences. I think uh, it's a policy, a health policy that uh, the, uh, is different from country by country, but uh, the test and, for example, uh, I told you that there are two types of tests like antibody testing. This type of test is very cheaper than PCR and uh, nucleotide test uh, testing uh, for viral RNA. I think in upcoming uh, month uh, we could uh, uh, have tests that are uh, very cheap and uh, they could uh, answer and uh, show the test very soon. And I think uh, it, it, uh, that would be logical to test every athlete, but with this type of test that is uh, cheap and uh, they could uh, show us the test very quick. Right. That's perfect. Um, I have another question here. Um, sure. What do you cur currently know about the possible influence of a high cardio respiratory fitness, uh, CFR, as a prognostic marker for sudden cardiac death? Once again, I'm sorry, could you please repeat it? I'm sorry. Yes, there's no problem. No problem, Eddie. I can't repeat it. Uh, what do you currently know about the possible influence of a high cardiorespiratory fitness as a prognostic marker for sudden cardiac death? I'm sorry, but uh, it's... Uh... It's not possible to get uh, many back with the internet. Uh, it's having some issues. Um, we're taking notes of your questions that you have posted. Uh, Adrian, uh, Randy, uh, who else? Uh, Falola. Um, we get noted of your questions and we'll pass it to Mary and we'll get a proper answer and uh, get back to you uh, very soon. Um, on behalf of Badminton Paramedic, Pan America Confederation. I'm uh, sorry, I apologize for this issue. Uh, we thank you for your participation and patience. Stay healthy and safe and uh, see you on Friday. Take care. <laughs>